is Charlie Starr from Blackberry Smoke, and you're listening to Premier Guitars, The Big Five. My favorite guitar is a 1956 Gibson Les Paul Jr. that uh, I bought when I was about 20 years old in Atlanta, Georgia, in a little music store called Clark Music. That was about 1993. I've had it ever since. Played it on pretty much every Blackberry Smoke show and album. And uh, it's a, an old refin. It was refinished in the late 70s. I don't know who did it. Um, and it's pretty much a Frankenstein. It's a it's a road-worn guitar for sure. It looks like it's been on fire at some point. <laughs> but it sounds great. And I've, I have lots of other Les Paul Juniors. I love them dearly. And uh, it sounds better than all of them. It was the only guitar I had for a while. And uh, I played it in so many smoky bars, you know, when I was in my early 20s and it just kind of becomes a part of your hands you know um, it was most definitely a tool but uh, I think when you play a guitar like that uh, for so many hours you know working with it and uh, it becomes an extension of your playing and uh, you sort of bond with it you know literally your 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 DNA is all over it your skin your skin and your sweat and blood and I don't know, and also it just spoke to me from the very first time I picked it up, so that's a big part of it. It's a really balanced guitar. It's not very bright, and it's not terribly dark either. It's somewhere in the middle, um, and so it sounds good through any amplifier. So I, I could take it around when I was younger, you know, if I was uh, playing it, uh, sitting in with a friend's band or had some random, you know, cover gig somewhere. It always sounded the same always sounded really good to me um, and it was already a legendary guitar in Atlanta before I bought it it belonged to Rick Richards of the Georgia Satellites and he had gigged with it and he loved it too he want he he wants it back but he's never getting it back <laughs> I was playing a, a 57 junior not long ago on stage that I just acquired and it's a really good one too it's it it will speak to you as well when you pick it up it's very resonant very light and I played a couple of songs with it in my my buddy in the in Blackberry Smoke, Benji Shanks, he's a vintage guitar nerd too, and, and uh, we were he was said, "Oh, that's a good one," you know. And I picked that black one up and played it, and he said, "But it's not that one. That one just has every color of the rainbow, as far as tone goes, with every chord. It's like, oh, it's it 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 ticks every box. Those '50s P90s, you know, they they some of them mellow in a really neat way where they're they're not harsh or abrasive and others get bigger and rounder sounding and others get brighter some get weak and um like the like the like they're dying you know like the magnetism of the poles is dying um it's weird they're like snowflakes no two ever sounded completely identical but this one just settled into this really warm thing you can't make it sound bad mine is exile on main street the rolling stones um, it's most definitely my favorite rock and roll album, um, which is funny because it, it encompasses uh, so many different genres of music. It touches on so many. It touches on gospel and blues and country music and um, even a little bit of like rockabilly, you know, early rock and roll um, soul music. It, and it's as a whole, it sounds really dirty and dark and like the Stones were having a whole lot of uh, debaucherous fun when they made it, which I'm sure they were, but and recorded under like really nefarious circumstances. But I can I I can never tire of it. I mean, I could say like over people who overplay, you know, um, but I kind of love that sometimes too, <laughs> you know, because um, what who defines overplaying, you know or what situation does. Or I could say like gear snobs, but I'm kind of one of them also, because I like, I like, you know, vintage guitars mostly. I mean, I, I like, I like a lot of guitars, even, you know, new guitars as well. So, but I, but I tend to really be mostly interested in vintage gear. I don't know, I, I love it. I love the guitar player, uh, the guitar playing and collecting community. Um, I guess I probably don't like the trolls, um, you know, as far as their online presence and people who are so opinionated about players or gear or shows or albums or whatever. But what's not to love? Merle Travis, I don't know if that's a big surprise, but I think Merle Travis is probably the best guitar player who ever lived. And Chad Atkins is obviously, you know, revered 
um, equally so, or maybe more, but I don't know. There's something about Merle Travis's guitar playing that, um, I could listen to it every day and I really can't do, I've tried and tried to play. I can play parts of a lot of his songs, not nearly as fast as he did, but and he only used these two fingers, his thumb and his index finger. And, uh, it is extremely complicated and, and, um, sophisticated it's definitely not lowbrow guitar playing at all and um i don't know maybe that's not a surprise but i mean it's not jimmy page who i love dearly too <laughs> but um yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna put the number one on merle travis well i guess maybe i answered that with the guitar question earlier um with that black bless paul jr um, if there is a such thing as a secret weapon um that would be it i think Gibson Custom Shop took it years ago and scanned it and everything, but I think at some point somebody was like, this is just an old refin guitar. Why do we need to do this? <laughs> there was talk for a minute of, of uh, replicating it, you know, um, and, and making a few. Um, but that, that went the way of the wind. But I get it. I mean, I never was like, you got to do this, you know. It's just, it's, a, it's, a, it's really a guitar that's special to me. Obviously, there are guitars that are, that are, um, you know, museum pieces uh, people have that, you know, really clean bursts, uh, for example, that look like they were just, you know, shipped yesterday and those don't get played much. But this one got played. It got a lot of love and a lot of tough love because it's really, really beat up. Um, but I think that could be the case with most old guitars and amps. Like when they're really, when they look like they've been really kicked around, it's because they worked and people loved them. And uh, sometimes you'll pick up a really clean museum piece and think, hmm, well, this one doesn't sound all that great. And it doesn't feel all that great. Maybe the reason it doesn't have a scratch on it is because it didn't, it, somebody didn't love it. 